Have you ever chased something you didn't want for one year? Have you just followed what you were supposed to because you had no direction? Start a new chapter you never wanted to start? Be in an environment where working long hours, doing what you're told, and putting in elevated effort is normal because everybody here loves doing their job? I'm going to tell you a story of a fresh out of college adult, Andrew Rausch, who jumped straight into the corporate world without even knowing what they wanted to do with their lives. Growing up, I always wanted to do something with YouTube. Hey, this is the Lego SSJ One Go 2000, and I'm doing a tutorial on Lego Gohan Super Saiyan 2 hair out of hot glue. Or something online. There's a pistol! Like, okay. No, it's race for the pistol! Help, guys! He got it! Where are you? Where are you? Oh, okay. You've axed him to death. I juked him! I got him down with the grenade! <laughs> guys, I t a three grenades versus a pistol. <laughs> a grenade always wins. <laughs> something involving either gaming, fitness, or anime related content. Hey, are you enjoying the anime training workouts? Yes, but I'm too sore to do them every day, or even every other day. Well, what do you do after workouts or on rest days? Lie on my couch watching Attack on Titan. Have you seen the new season, by the way? But like many loving parents, they only know specific paths to achieve a secure and happy life. And all of the above... Oh, Sid, you walked in front of my bullet! Super Saiyan. Full Saiyan. Do not cooperate with their ideas. Knowing this, I was mostly suggested into a secure degree with a corporate job lined up right after I graduated. I didn't necessarily want this job, but at this point, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And with no clear-cut dream, feeling like I was put in a rush to start my life, I started working my first corporate job. On January 9th, 2023, driving 30 minutes from my house to enter a 19-story high skyscraper, I enter my first day of work. Three hours into orientation and two cups of coffee and driving home in the dark, I realize what I had gotten myself into. Thinking to myself, is this what I want to put my effort into, working for somebody else, for a company I'm not passionate about, to get wealthier? No. But I didn't know what else to do for now. Days go by. As time passes, I feel a resistance to this lifestyle but uneasy as well from no clear direction. Exhausted from these working hours and unsure what other career path to even consider, I felt defeated and also motivated to get used to this lifestyle. Everyone else is doing it, so why can't I? Why should I? I had a choice to make, either stay here somewhere I didn't have any reason or purpose to be at besides somebody else's opinion of me, or to quit. To quit because it was simply hard, because I was tired, because I couldn't handle the pace, because I couldn't learn a new way to live. It was truly a sink or swim scenario. I could sink into the depths of myself, the darkness of quitting, never learning what I would be if I stayed, if I pushed through, if I learned what true discipline is for me where I can't call in sick every time, where I can't have the luxury of time, where I have responsibility, where I'm consistent, not by choice. I could drown and lose those opportunities, or I could swim. I could rise above myself, push the easy way out, push the negative thoughts out of me, simply fight even without purpose, just fighting myself for fighting's sake, conquer myself and truly learn how to adapt through moments like these. I chose to stay, and I didn't know how much this decision would change me. I was searching for something, maybe validation from my parents, doing this because it was a safe path, just money at first, 
I wasn't sure myself. I do know I felt something push me, drive me to continue, to fight and just do it. I had motivation to just push and see what happens. I wanted to save myself from myself. I didn't have any direction, even though I knew this wasn't my dream. I had to chase something. I needed something to work on and to see where it would take me. It's truly a selfish story of being thrown into the wild and seeing if I can make it out. There's no greater good I was working for this year. It was true survival for Andrew Rausch at this point in his life. The motivation and drive came from who I am and who I want to be like. At the later years of my college career, I was interested in philosophy, specifically Stoicism. Understanding these struggles were intrinsic and that I could change my thoughts and attitudes to my work. It pushed me. I also had a sense of wanting to make my parents proud. They gave me the blessing of paying for my college, so the least I could do is try for this career they wanted for me. This decision marks the beginning of the most important chapter of my life up until now. I chose to stay, to challenge my old ways, my old lazy ways full of excuses and false discipline. I thought I was disciplined because I could work out, but I had dozens of extra hours to play with weights. Now in the corporate world, every second matters or you'll just waste your time. It's hard to change so instantaneously to challenge the three credit hour final semester with 40 hour work weeks plus five to 10 extra hours involving commute, getting ready for work and putting everything up from work. But what would I achieve if I stayed in my old ways? I could get an easy job and mooch off my parents for eternity if I really wanted. But is that the person I'm trying to be? While working, I noticed in the back of my mind something is missing. Something about working hard both inside work and outside work through self-improvement plus stoicism. Something is missing at the end of the day. A feeling I wouldn't quite grasp for a while. Despite that missing feeling, I had enough internal and some external motivation at this point to understand I am in this corporate world. So I better make the most out of it and train myself in whatever way I can to handle it. I invested everything it took to prepare myself for the 8 to 5 hustle, the structure, the pressure, and the stress. All of it I needed to prepare myself for. I started with cold showers. Cold showers in the dead of winter. The one thing I kept for the longest time was these. My Hail Marys, my best friend, the old reliable. Freezing, cold, wake you up and challenge you before you can even think of a full sentence type of environment. These will consistently give you discipline. If discipline was an item you could purchase, cold showers were a preferred payment. Of course we didn't stop there. This was the first major victory of each day, but there was more to learn. I started planning my work days in the morning. I worked out during my 30 minute lunches, Andrew Huberman podcast driving home, and I diligently prepared my lunches and dinners for upcoming days so I never had decision fatigue. Everything was going as planned. I seemingly perfected my hours, which turned to days, which turned to weeks. It felt like I was finally grasping this lifestyle. But through optimizing every hour of my life, some feeling was moving deep within my subconscious, something I couldn't quite bring to my conscious mind. One night after a long day of cold showers, a full work day, commute, meal prep, I decided to watch something fun on YouTube for once. Sloth, an interesting character in my life. I've always been a lazy person at heart, constantly groaning at work I have to do, and always taking the path of least resistance when I could. But hey, it's been a while since I indulged in some entertainment, so I thought, why not stay up just a little late to enjoy myself? It slowly weaves itself into the quiet moments of my day, like a whisper of an exciting promise establishing itself as an innocent habit at first. But then, it becomes normal. What started as a minuscule 30 minutes with late night YouTube soon evolved to hours on end. Weeks melted seamlessly into months, and before I realized it, this small habit turned into an insistent vice, 
quietly embedding itself into my routine. All the momentum, the fortified mindset I've built from consistency has collapsed. My night routine, what used to be a foundation of consistent habits, has gone from soft lighting, prayer, light stretching and reading, to a nightly routine of YouTube indulgence. No constraints, no time limits, just the glow of the screen and background noise until I drift to sleep. This bleeds into other aspects of my life. I eventually stop taking cold showers, start watching TV and eating chips right when I get home. I've gotten even further behind than when I started working here. I found myself going through the motions, mindlessly continuing each day. Contentment, a deceptive force driven by consumption blinded me just enough to veil the deeper issues I didn't want to confront. Monotonous days began to feed this emptiness, until in an abrupt wave, it all crashed down on me at once. I was engulfed by an unsettling silence, devoid of sufficient distraction. Then I found myself stranded, all alone in the solitude of my thoughts. Is this all I've become? Toiling without any direction, my only purpose reduced to returning home and binging media till my thoughts drowned out. The fruits of my labor lay in ruins, a betrayal orchestrated by myself, every endeavor now stripped of meaning. I descended further into mindless routine, not intentionally, but for the comfort it brought, trapped without an idea of alternatives. All of the efforts of my labor had been betrayed by myself. This lifestyle was not meant for Andrew Rausch. His dream stretched far beyond the narrow walls of his cubicle. With too much silence, I felt an overwhelming desire for noise. The silence was too loud for me. The solitude became daunting, forcing me to confront the unfamiliar areas of my mind I've been avoiding for months. Yet, I clung to the silence, sensing a feeling from beneath, a mysterious feeling I was unsure of, but I felt it needed to surface, my unconscious that hinted at a forthcoming transformation. After continuous silence, that feeling continued and grew stronger and stronger. Diving deeper into my consciousness, I immersed myself in YouTube videos centered around self-discovery and finding one's purpose. Days turned into weeks as I contemplated the idea of who I am. And after consistent silence, consistent thought, I found something. Something I was meant to do. Something I knew was deep inside of me and something I've always wanted to do. I wanted to start a YouTube channel. What type of YouTube channel, I thought. How about one for people like my past self? People who are so lost in their devices, lost in consumption, lost in doing things mindlessly, even work, but a current of doubt flowed into me. Was I truly capable of this endeavor? Do I have anything of value to offer? The weight of external judgment loomed over me. What will others think of me? Will they think I'm stupid? Will they think I'm going to fail? Uncertainty gripped me, threatening my aspirations. Engaged in an internal struggle that spanned for months, on one front, I was yearning to resign from my corporate job and wholeheartedly delve into YouTube. In reality, the weight of those thoughts would eat at me, creating self-doubt and a yearning for escape. Drowned with work-related stress, I lost sight of my true identity. The relentless demands of my job clouded my thoughts, nourishing a desire to quit, both from the workplace grind and the hesitations about embarking on a YouTube adventure. The dance between these opposing forces left me in a state of indecision my aspirations buried beneath the weight of external pressures. My parents became an anchor for me, preventing me from impulsively abandoning my job. In moments of despair, when quitting seemed like the only plausible solution, they guided me back to reality, empathizing with my struggles while rekindling the flame of my aspirations. Even though they didn't fully understand me, it was still nice. This brought me back to the moment I remembered my dream a dream I had almost let slip through the cracks of self-doubt and external judgments. I decided to let go of the fears of judgment, 
Understanding others might not comprehend a path they hadn't witnessed or an aspiration that they couldn't see. I had to grow this dream from within. I started a journey of self-preparation to work consistently and achieve this. As responsibilities at work continued to grow, the task of organizing crucial documentation for my team before I leave and organization shifts at work made a lot of unwanted change and difficulties, intensifying the challenges I faced. Wanting the change to this chaos, I went back to my roots. I started listening to motivational tapes. I started waking up early. I started lifting harder. I started running harder. Work is incongruent with my physical pushes. Meetings are flowing, tasks are getting completed. Even though it's still not easy, things are aligning. My mindset was coming back together, especially towards this final stretch of working for the man. One year is a long time. A time with potential for profound transformation and growth. Depending on where we put ourselves, both internally and externally. I found myself in a situation I didn't want to be in, but made no other choice for myself, so I stayed in this environment in order to grow. I learned how to organize my time, evaluate my health both physically and mentally, mentally focus, and harness my internal energy. I unearthed a sense of discipline and what it's like to show up day in and day out, even when the desire waned. I learned a lot about myself. I was weaker than I thought, less disciplined than I thought. I thought I was disciplined because I would work out consistently before, but at my own leisure. But true discipline is working around something you cannot control or change. The work time block I could not control. I had to show up, and my free time was before and after that block. From my college days of going with the flow, navigating with minimal effort, getting by on my own time, I found myself thrust into corporate, rigid structure and always there. Working around such a force and finding ways to control where I could, the constant feeling of not wanting to be there or not belonging there to fuel my aspirations. But not only driving that dream out, I began to forge it. I realized the skills I need to learn, the sacrifices to achieve that dream, the reality of the trade-off unfolded before me, the secure job with potential to grow in the company and consistent pay or an audacious pursuit of a dream filled with uncertainties that loved ones may not understand. But I was ready to embrace that risk. Throughout this year of transformation, the sheer magnitude of change, pain, growth, motivation, and relentless discipline I unearthed surprises me. If I could channel this effort, this unwavering energy, into a singular focus of my genuine passion for an entire year, with unwavering conviction, I believe I can achieve remarkable accomplishments. Have you ever started chasing something you wanted for one year? I want to clarify all the challenges and hardships I faced weren't solely attributable to this specific company. It's the overall combination of a corporate work style and my initial lack of enthusiasm for this path. To be clear, this is actually a great company, offering excellent benefits, competitive salary, a supportive environment where individual employees are valued. The company invests in its staff through training, team building initiatives, and various events. The company also gave like a ton of free food. Like almost every single day, if you worked hard enough, you could get a free meal. But I think of it as a marriage. If you find yourself married to someone you truly never desired, you may manage to keep the relationship up, but it's forced and difficult. Similarly, I never desired to commit to this job, thinking this is the one. Yet on the flip side, I had yet to discover the path I was truly wishing to pursue up until now. I'm not saying marry someone or do something you hate, but in another lens, try something and just do it even if you don't know if you're going to like it or not. 
in order to grow and understand if you will like it or not. I found something through these hardships, a professional path I could see myself pushing through difficult times, enjoy most of my days, challenge myself, and work on a career that works with my workflow. I'm thankful for receiving this experience. It's been a journey of building discipline, getting paid for it, and experiencing personal growth in areas where I needed it the most. As I move forward, I leave this part of my life with a foundation beneath me and a dream ahead of me. This is also relevant to my own experiences. For me, this was a very difficult year. Discovering later on, I also have ADHD that's been untreated for my entire life, made a lot more sense with the constant tiredness from forcing myself to focus on stuff that I'm not interested in. But it is all relative. For someone, this may sound very easy to go through this year at corporate jobs, just work for them. But for others, this year may sound like difficult. It's all relative to where you're at in your life. This is just how I felt based on where I was at in my life. But anyways, if you are curious what this channel will be about, I'm going to emphasize health, fitness, self-improvement, philosophy, motivation, discipline, self-mastery, continual learning, productivity, and possibly like anime, manga kind of stuff because it relates to all that. Um, so if any of that is interesting to you, I would encourage you to stick around. I'm going to experiment with this channel a lot. I don't know if I'll do videos just like this because this one took a lot, a lot of work to put in. I've been planning this for months. And as I'm recording this, I haven't even edited a single part. But anyways. Yeah, um, I'm still editing this video. I should have planned this way better. Um, I regret so much. I've been editing since 6 a.m. It's literally 10.31 p.m. Um, I still have so much to edit. Yeah, we're planning this better in the future. That is what the channel will involve, and I hope if you're interested in any of that, you'll subscribe, like the video, share it, and continue to stick around and see where this journey takes me, and maybe you will learn something along the way. But anyways, my name's Andrew Rausch, and Let's just see where this journey takes us. Just check out part two, okay? Rate, comment, subscribe, Lego SSJ1 Goku, and 